Hello everyone, if you are new here, my name is Christina. Welcome to the channel. Today is a little review slash flip through of the Norfolk A5 six ring leather Filofax in the color taupe. This is actually my first ring agenda. I mean, I did start using a classic happy planner sometime last year just for fun. And um, I don't know, I feel like the ring system is growing on me. Um, I just love how customizable a ring planner is, which is why I bought one as my day-to-day catch-all planner for the rest of 2023. Now, before we open this up, I want to talk about how beautiful this color is. Like, this is gorgeous. Um, I love that the corners here are rounded. It kind of gives it this like nice soft yet chic look. Clasp here is a button which does a great job with holding everything together. Now, the inside. Now I actually didn't know that the Filofax was going to come with inserts. Um, because before I ordered this, I bought a ton of inserts online from different companies. So had no idea when I first opened this that this was gonna be here. First, we have a pen loop to the left. Um, there's a little piece of leather here that's covering it, but you'll see here that this um, stretches. So if you have a pretty bulky pen or marker, it'll fit in here, it just fits to size. Um, and then we also have a zipper here that takes you to a pretty large pocket. Um, you can fit sticker sheets in here, um, notes, appointments, that sort of thing. But you know what? I'm personally not going to use this pocket because I know if I shove a ton of things in this pocket, I am going to lose the shape of the front cover um, you know, it's, I'm going to lose the shape. It's going to look bulky. I love right now how it looks. It just looks so nice, clean, elegant, and I want to keep that shape. And then there's another pocket here in the front. Um, this is also just another large pocket that you could just slide sticker sheets in. Um, I definitely think this pocket is probably better for sticker sheets so that you can have it peeking out here. I notice sometimes if I like put things in you know pockets like this zipper one um i'll forget that i have things in there um, it's one of those things that if i don't see it then i won't use it for the last month i've been on the hunt for a six ring a5 planner but i wanted big rings these are huge they are 35 millimeter you can fit a lot of pages in here um, that's what I was looking for. I didn't want to start off with small rings. This is my first six ring planner and I just don't know how my setup is going to be in this planner. Um, also, I don't know how many inserts I'll need. So starting with small rings means I might have to change up my planner system based on the size of the rings. And I just didn't want that to happen. So we're just starting off with big ones. We have a cover page. This is a 2023 planner. It isn't undated. Um, the setup is a, a week on two pages. And then there's a line here for you to put your name, who the planner belongs to. We have a year at a glance here on the left for 2023. And then another year at a glance for 2024. The following two pages um, kind of reminds me of a future log. Um, we have January through December here, and then at the bottom of each month, there's some space. And I feel like this is a perfect place to write down future events, birthdays, celebrations, travel plans, appointments, uh, whatever you know dates that you need to remember for the future, this is the place to put them. Now we have a weekly overview. This is the bulk of the planner are these weekly overviews. Um, this one is for the week of December 26th to January 1st. We have, um, this is the Monday column, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday is split into two. 
Um, and this is a, um, I don't know what to call it, but there are times here along the side of each column. So if you prefer time blocking, you could most definitely use this for time blocking. Although the times run from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And that is what is set up for Monday through Friday and then Saturday and Sunday. There aren't times here since, since the two days are under one column, but you could still use these lines for listing out like your to-do list for Saturday and Sunday. There's a section down here that you can use for note taking. And then there's a mini calendar here at the bottom right. So this planner does not have a monthly overview. So this page here on the left-hand side, it kind of serves as a monthly overview. You have your um, monthly to-do list here, the top left, um, special dates here. There's some bullet points here um, for you to list out your goals and then a note section. And then here on the right is a cover page. Now, this cover page, I don't know if you're able to tell here um, on the screen, but it is dot grid. So it kind of reminds me of bullet journaling, like you could draw out a monthly overview since the planner doesn't already come with one. Or you can use this in bullet journaling style and decorate it the way that you'd like. Um, you could draw things, maybe write out a inspirational quote or your mantra for the month. On that same note about bullet journaling, there are two pages here, two extra pages that are dot grid, and then two pages here that are lined. So in a sense, this is somewhat customizable, even though you have your weekly overview here. What I love about the inserts in this particular planner is the color of the paper. There's a hint of cream in them, so they're warm. The pages are not a true white. They're also not too white that there's a blue hint to them. Um, I love, my, my personally, my favorite is um, true white or um, a creamy paper. And so this just does it. And I love that creamy paper matches this planner so well. Um, it's just so pretty. It's such a good, it's such a good match. And then another thing is the paper quality. Um, this paper is quite thin. Um, it's 80 GSM. So if you want a better understanding of how thin that is, it's comparable to computer paper. I think computer paper is around 80 to 100 GSM. So yes, it is it is quite thin. But I think um, I think I'm gonna do a pen test at the end of this, so you all can see what types of pens, markers, marker pens, um, what which ones bleed and ghost here on the paper. Now let's just flip back to the ending here. So this is the last week of 2023. And then you have a handful of extra dot grid pages. And then you also have another handful of lined pages. So what's nice is that you can pop these in the weeks that you need just maybe some extra paper for a project or maybe a grocery list or something. Um, and then after that, we have six dividers, six dividers here. Oh, I didn't even realize we have, wow, this is a lot, but you have a lot of inserts. This is a to-do list with bullet points. And then there's a note section here at the very bottom. And then we also get a clear sheet here. Um, there's a pocket at the top. So this is just also another opportunity, another place for you to place some sticky notes, um, important appointments, flag pages um, here in this little pocket. Um, and then last but not least, we have a ruler here that kind of snaps into place. 
This is perfect for placing in your planner the week that you're using so that it's just easy to flip to that page um, when you need to fill it out or reference it. Now, the back panel here, there's another large pocket that mirrors the front cover. And then there's also a second pocket here. There are nine credit card inserts here. So you can use this once again. Um, I've seen a lot of people on Instagram decorate this section here with um, cute little cards, um, sticky notes, um, all sorts of things just to like, I don't know, this is kind of like the place to be creative because my plan for this planner is to just straight up be functional. Um, there's going to be a little sticker usage, but it's not going to be the way that it was before because like I said, this is my day-to-day -day planner um, and you know, I just don't have the time like I used to to decorate my planner. Alrighty, time for the pen test. I pulled out a sheet and then we are gonna test out a handful of pens and markers I typically use. And of course, just some that I wanna try out on this paper so that you guys can see. Starting off with the Uni EMOTT fine point. This is a 0.4 millimeter nib. Although when I write it out on the piece of paper, I do write 0.5. Um, that is incorrect. This is a 0.4 nib. Next, I have the Sharpie pen. I could not find the size of this nib, but in comparison to the Uni pen, it is thicker. Um, I like this one because of how dark the ink is. The next pen I'm testing out is the Sharpie Ash Gel. This is a very common pen that a lot of people in the planning world use. It writes very smooth. Um, I think that one was a 0.7 millimeter nib. And then we have the Sharpie Roller. Oh my gosh, Sharpie is just coming out with pen after pen after pen, and they're all just really great pens. So this one is a Sharpie Roller. I don't like this one as much. It does remind me of the S gel, just writes a little bit differently because of the type of pen. And then the next one is the Tombow Fudineski brush pen. This is in the soft tip. Um, I typically use the hard tip for when I'm writing in my planner, but I couldn't find it. I'm pretty sure my cat like knocked it under the couch or something like that. Shifting to the markers, I have the Tombow dual brush pen. Now, I am not going to use this in my A56 ring because I'm not going to be drawing anything or coloring anything in. It's mainly going to be for functional planning. I did use this marker when I was bullet journaling and I just want to try this out so that you guys can see what you can get away with with these inserts. Um, and then next, I have the Zebra Mild Liners. These I use for highlighting. So. This is very important if, if whether or not this is going to bleed through. And then I know this sounds crazy, but I have the Sharpie permanent marker. I am like almost 100% sure this is going to bleed through. But once again, I just want you all to see what you can get away with with these inserts. wow, we did not get a lot of bleeding. I thought we were for sure gonna see some bleeding, but it's mainly just ghosting. Honestly, that's not a big deal for me. I know for some people, ghosting is a big deal. But then again, if these inserts were heavier in weight, they were thicker, that means that your planner would be heavy. I mean, it's already heavy with these inserts, but thinner paper is going to make this manageable. Like you can carry this around. Totally understandable. But then again, this is all just based on preference. So that is it for this pen test. Let me know what you think of this planner. I believe if you've watched this video, I've already released the setup for this planner. And I've also released my 2023 planner and journal lineup, which explains, well, if you've been following my journey here um, on my YouTube channel, it explains why I've switched from a daily planner to a six ring planner. 
Um, so I'm gonna leave those two videos um, down in the description and in the cards as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.